Welcome to One Love, One Connection, One Us, and I want to wish everybody who is listening a happy new year. And so tonight, I am your host, by the way, I am your host, Reverend Arlene Cahet, and I have my beloved here with me, King Teasdale, and we are going to be talking about, uh, you know, well, you know, representing you don't need a man. So are are you crazy? But before we do that, uh, we're going to go ahead and get prayed in. So hold on a moment, and we will be right back. Please forgive us. <laughs> Apparently, I had myself on mute, and I was thinking I was talking to you, and obviously, I was talking to myself. <laughs> and me. <laughs> but again, my name is Reverend Arlene Cahet, and I have my special guest host, my beloved and my husband, King Teasdale. And tonight, we're going to be talking about um, women who say, I don't need a man. And my question to them is, are you crazy? Now, one of the reasons why I had decided to do this show was because this is not the, the, this, you know, this is something that's been going on for a number of years now. There have been a number of women who have been in relationships where they have felt hurt and damaged by it. And so they may see, say that. Um, also, I think that a lot of what may have contributed to it in the beginning um, may have been the feminist movement where, you know, women were fighting for their rights to be able to work. They're fighting for equal pay. They're fighting for a number of different reasons. And so uh, oftentimes, you know, women, when they're in the workplace, they are they are entering in and they're uh, taking on this energy, this masculine energy, and trying to behave as men would behave in the workplace. As a result of it, uh, they may have, you know, stepped too much into that masculine energy and have drawn to them experiences that may not have been the most pleasant with men. Now, uh, you know, I hesitate to say this, but I think that um, – you know, one of the things that people need to be cautious of when they talk about uh, the feminist movement and the uh, feminist movement is that a lot of a lot of what you know you may have been associated, some of it may have been associated with um, you know women who may not have necessarily have been attracted to men. And as a result, they have kind of pushed this idea and this energy of you don't need a man, need a man uh, that you are operating in this space of, you know, I can do it all by myself. And, and here is, you know, my thought on it. Um, when a person actually says the statement, I don't need a man, what are you really saying? Because there is a certain wisdom that infinite intelligence has. And if, you know, if infinite intelligence 
had not intended for men to be around, then they wouldn't be here. So obviously there is a need for men and that masculine energy and that masculine presence. Now, now I'm not saying that, and, and I guess you could say because infinite intelligence has actually created men in and of themselves, then, you know, who are you, you know, who may have been hurt by a man in the past, you know, to say, you know, that you don't need men? What is that what is that doing to the energy that is out there in the world when you actually say that you don't need a man? Um, I have a running theory and because I know that everything is energy and that in addition to everything being energy, we are also co creators in the world that we have out here. So I have this running theory that a larger part of why we see uh, a great deal of homosexuality out there is because because we have a number of people out there that say that the, that the masculine energy isn't isn't needed, um, and many of the women who do say this take on these masculine aspects. They have kind of a bit caused the energy to be out of balance, and thereby creating more of these more effeminate men and, you know, because the statement has actually been um, put out there. Because um, I I can guarantee you, whenever you actually say a statement and you say it with a great deal of energy, you cause uh, a whole lot of what I call destructive chaos when you do it. Um, I, and I and I I'm not I'm not just talking uh, talking just out of just some random thought, but this is something that I have actually observed in my life, and it took a number of years to recover from it. So many of you may be wondering or asking yourself, like, well, what inspired me to do this show? And a larger part of it was because, uh, in my dealings with with the work that I do, I I had the opportunity to work with um, a young, uh, you know, with a young woman using my sons are calling. So I had the opportunity to actually work with uh, this young woman, and she was looking to get a Christmas tree. And, you know, it, you know, for the most part, I, you know, I had a pretty relatively pleasant experience with her. Um, however, when we actually got to the place where we uh, went to pick up the tree, um, there was a part of her that wanted uh, wanted to, like, challenge the experience or challenge the energy, the masculine energy that she was uh, encountering with the person who actually helped us put up the tree. And she told him that she could do his job. And, you know, and I'm, I'm sure that she can, but does she really want to? Do you really want to be spending your time, you know, doing hard labor, putting a tree up on the top of the roof? Uh, and then she was like, and I don't need a man. I don't know. I was like, okay, I, I, I can't co-sign to this. So when she asked me what did I think, and I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to engage <laughs> in this particular conversation. I'm not going to engage with this energy, uh, you know. So, but I was like, you know what? Uh, as I told the young person, the young man, I was like, you know, uh, as a woman, I, I, you know, appreciate men and and the fact that you want to do this job and assist us with putting this tree on top of the, the top of the car, that is fine with me. And and but this wasn't the only experience that I had with her when we uh, when we got her home. Um, she had asked these two men to assist her with putting uh, the putting the tree inside of her home. And when they weren't quick about it, and I think that they actually did say something like, well, what do we, well, you know, what do we get for doing this? And I let's just put it this way. I The men were not going to, you know, it, when you, when I was taking a look at them, I could tell that they were going to actually do it. They may have been a little bit resistant, but, you know, they were of the old school, and they were going to allow her to, you know, do this by herself. (laughs) 
However, she went into this energy of the poor, woe is me, like, I can do it myself. I can do it. You know, I was like, and I looked at her, I was like, you know what? Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> I was like, she don't mean that. She does not mean it. And, it, and that was the truth. She didn't mean it. Um, and I, I said, but you know what, you know, uh, gentlemen, we, we really, really, you know, I want to thank you for, you know, assisting us and, um, and, you know, and we really, really appreciate you for, for doing this. Now, in my, in, you know, my response would have been if I was in her place at that moment was to do, to get kind of coquettish. Uh, with the gentleman and maybe offer them some eggnog or something um, or maybe a dollar. But to actually get into that energy of the poor woe is me, um, it was not a good look. So I know that I've been doing quite a bit of talking, but do you have anything um, that you want to, you know, so far from what I've said, is there anything that you would like to share? Well, one of the things that could have been shared when they asked, um, what do you have for me in order for me to put in the tree in your house? And I would say, well, I would have probably shared, I got some appreciation for you (laughs) because (laughs) you being a man who looks to me would honor my presence as a woman. Now, be mindful I'm talking as a woman. Um, would actually be honored to do this favor for me. So you kind of give them the mindset of recognizing that, yeah, they are valuable. And uh, the value of them just coming into my presence to do this work is honorable to it in love of them. Yeah. I mean, this is just another way, but everybody would approach it in their own particular way, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, but I, I suppose in that particular instance, you know, if so are, are you suggesting, you know, from what you shared is that when, if she had come with the approach that, well, you know, you are needed, you are appreciated, it's saying something that would kind of lean into that that thing that says, you know, you're, you know, this is my expectation of you as a man, as a protector of women who will assist in getting things done. Um, are, are you suggesting that that would have been a better approach for her? Definitely better than the one she had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> But, you know, it's, 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 you know, communication is a two-way street. When we're working to build a nation, in essence, because that's what we are doing when we interrelate with one another. It's all about, because everything is about relationships. Whether you know a person or not, just the interaction in and of itself is a building mechanism. So sometimes you have to let a person know their worth. Because if you don't, how are they going to know it if someone's not telling them that? And oftentimes when you see situations like this, someone says, I don't need a man. Does that tell a man that he's worthy? Does that tell a man that, you know, there's any worth to him? No. To me, it seems like it kind of puts him in the trash can. It's like, you know, we have to put the trash out now. <laughs> now, mind you, ladies and gentlemen, I, I have I've heard this, uh, you know, um, from men uh, quite often th- that there are a number of women out and this is not to discount the fact that, that they may have had challenging experiences uh, in their past. Um, however, you know, I, am, oh, I have always been a proponent of being mindful of your words, being mindful of your, mindful of your thoughts. And, and let's put it this way. For those women who actually live in that particular vibration of, you know, of having past experiences where they felt damaged and hurt and they feel this desire to be by themselves, um, it's fine. Uh, However, one of the things that you have to consider if you are, you know, if you are saying this and is, you know, is this a consistent pattern for me? 
is this a consistent pattern of attracting men that have caused some type of damage? And here's another, there, here's another thought. Are you in that energy of projecting what it is that your, your expectation of what manhood looks like? Being, you know, honorable, being the protector, uh, being, you know, uh, worthy, upright, the, you know, those, those men that would be, you know, life conscious and, and upright. Are you, are, are you entering into your relationships with men and on all levels? And I'm not just talking, um, on the intimate, uh, intimate level. I'm talking, are you expecting it of your brothers? Are you expecting it of your coworkers? Are you expecting it are you expecting it from all men? Because it, when women have that expectation that I expect you to be honorable. I expect you to I expect you to assist me when I when I ask for help when you see that I'm in a place where things are gonna be challenging. You know, when you have that expectation there is something, I think, uh, a sort of innate, natural thing within many men to stand in that role when that is an expectation of them. Um, and I think that perhaps that many women who have said that I don't need a man, they may have entered into the relationship with feeling, well, you know, let me see if I can bend in you know, then to the the idea of what this man may want want of me. And then after they come out of that experience, they you know, because they didn't go in with their hardcore expectations of what manhood looks like, um, to be uh, to be, you know, loved, honored and appreciated, then they 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 go into this place of having a warped, distorted view of of uh, of what relationship looks like, and then go out with this this mindset of that they don't need the need the masculine presence. You have anything to add to that? Well, it's interesting. When I hear, "I don't need a man," the first thing that crosses my mind is. There's probably a feeling of disappointment, hurt, and pain. And that should not be marginalized or dismissed as invalid. But hurt, pain, and disappointment are feelings or of emotions that need healing. It should be addressed in that manner for that person. But they may not even come to a place of recognizing and realizing that because oftentimes, Man, in the quotation marks, symbolizes strength. So when I suspect someone says, especially a woman, I don't need a man, she's saying because I am strong, okay? And because I am strong, I don't need you because you didn't represent strength when I needed you to represent strength. And on that, (laughs) (laughs) always good. (laughs) So it says she's got a flummox made with that one. We're gonna take a quick (laughs) We're gonna take a quick break. So we will be right back. Okay, and so we're back. So I I have actually had a moment to kind of collect my thoughts after King just threw me a whammy there. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> so, um, so one of the things. Oh, okay. So for those of you who are just coming on the line, uh, one of the things that King just brought up was that the women who sometimes say that that they don't need a man. Um, because he said that because um, men represent strength, so when they actually say that, 
what they're really saying is that you did not show up, you know, you did not, you know, I'm strong by myself. You did not show up for me. And so that is why I don't need you. Now, here, <laughs> I know that I talked about this a little bit earlier. And, and you know, while the music was playing, we actually did have a quick conversation, which is that, um, I guess you could say, the feminist movement, it has caused a great deal of confusion and distortion um, because there, uh, how did you, how did you put it, honey? Um, the, the women's lib movement basically was a good thing in the sense that, as you have shared, you know, it was talking about equality, mm-hmm. you know, making sure that, you know, there was equal pay, you know, that people, that women were not treated um, unequally and um, unjustifiably as far as, you know, job opportunities and things of that nature. But there was those who entered into the women's live movement with a different type of agenda where it was like uh, chauvinism was smashed, you know. It was like you come open the door for somebody um, and uh, <laughs> you open the door for a lady and you think everything is cool and she's like, I don't need you to open the door for me. Yeah, chivalry kind of went and out the door. It was like, let the door loose on them if they can like that. <laughs> You know, which really wasn't the thing to do. <laughs> but, you know, that, that's like a slap in the face. And so that was a difficult process for both male and females. But, you know, it's all about balance, and that's the key. But people kind of miss that as a reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're like, okay, so here's here's the thought. And here's the thought that I had after he shared that with me, which was that, again, I'm going to go back to the expectations that that women have for men and, and women sort of being firm on what they feel, you know, um, the, that masculine energy is. So, the, and I, I I say that because, you know, when you go in with this kind of uh, mindset that you should turn yourself into a pretzel and that person that did not show up for you with the strength that you that you wanted of them, you know, you have to sort of look at yourself first as to, well, why did you get into that situation uh, or why do you keep getting into situations where you're feeling damaged by it? But I see that we have uh, a caller on the line, so let, hold on and let's go welcome them. So welcome, caller. How are you this evening? Tell us who oh, you are I'm, and where you're calling from. I'm doing too confused to tell my name right now, but I'm going to continue the conversation regardless of my not name being spoken. But I thought the Women's Live movement was for the white women. And black women got drafted in because of their female parts. But when it came down to equality, black women still didn't get it. Their battle wasn't with their husbands. Their battle was with everybody else, including their husbands. The white <laughs> was for the white women to get equality to their white husbands who were ruling things. Black women, we never had, excuse me, the black women didn't have that problem. Their men already knew who ran the house. That wasn't a question. It wasn't the man, it was the woman. So she she lowered herself to get on the bandwagon with women writers or equal liberals who were trying to liberate their own kitchen. We didn't have that problem. So out of the masses of misunderstanding, thinking that it was a woman's problem, it wasn't. It was a white woman's problem. Excuse me yeah, yeah. for all of my white folks who are listening. But the battle wasn't sister to sister. It was white girl to black white boy. Period. And they thought the more the more breasts they could get involved with the bra burning program, they invited the, the uh, larger cup size from the sister. <laughs> well, I tell you one thing: it definitely brought forth a hodgepodge of a bunch of crap that was totally unnecessary. And so I understand exactly where you're coming from with that. Y'all, get, start your own women liberation and get your color back. <laughs> 
Or go just go sweet. Be done with it. <laughs> I, I, I was I was a hey, king. I was misled in the conversation, thinking that we were going to have a different type of conversation. We're talking about something that we really not programmed to be a part of. However, we, there is a, a greater issue here. We have to communicate and unify our own houses because right now that's where the greatest victory is in the division that is in our door, in our kitchen, in our bedroom. It's great division here. And the, the, the satisfaction of knowing that we're so con- convoluted against one another, the, the powers that be are very happy. Unfortunately, when we are unified as one, we are unstoppable at anything, king and queen. <clears throat> Good example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that because earlier I did mention the thing about encouraging and building a nation is what we really should be focused on whenever we deal with one another as far as relationships are concerned. Because when we look at the black community in and of itself, that's where our focus should be based on love and the way in which we respond and react to one another should have a building foundation of love, encouragement, and developing a nation of beauty and strength. Now you're talking about power. True power is in unity. And the unity of of a God and a goddess is truly the most profound spiritual power known unto the heavens. Talking about so when you universe. say that, so when you say that, and, and, and I'm in agreement with you, what is the feeling that you get when a woman says directly to you, I don't need a man? Is your response. You exactly when that happens, what happens inside first, of you? My first response is, you are absolutely correct. You don't need anybody. Matter of fact, prove to me that you know how to weave your own your own silk to make your own draw, and I'll always respect you. <laughs> you can't make silk? Oh, I'm sorry. Then some man, China man probably, made a pair of panties that you're wearing that I like. Now what? Oh, you don't need a man? You don't, you don't wear panties. I got it, sister. You're all right. I, I like you. I like you not needing a man. Go right ahead. What's his name, Juan or, or Chang? <laughs> What's that? What's that? What's that? Chang, one or Chang. Oh, oh, okay, I got you. <laughs> They're more like yin or yang. <laughs> so, so when we when we start using that using the term that I don't need a man, somehow the same conversation or the definition of the word independent, which was drilled into our young girls' heads, you have to be independent, and then we look at the society of nature. There is nothing in nature independent of itself but a black woman. How did that happen? We no well, other, no other nationality teaches independence but us. But we're the one that that's suffering from lack of unity to be independent. Well, I I, I will share um, with you uh, it just from you know just from my own experience. Uh, I I grew up in a family full of women, and they were independent. They were strong. They, you know, they did everything. And I think, you know, my mother herself was not married, and the person that I knew that was married, you know, which was my grand aunt, uh, I very rarely saw my uncle, his name is uh, Uncle Bo, I very, very rarely saw him because he worked the railroad. And I got to tell you, to, to be a family man and to have that job, that is just uh, not um, not uh, a good thing. You know, if you're a family man, right. don't work the railroad. But anyway, that aside, um, it was sort of drilled into me uh, at at that stage just from my experience in observing the women around me that they, that, you know, you had to be independent, you know, you had to be able to take care of, you know, take care of yourself because the men weren't there. I mean, the, the only men that were present 
um, were my male cousins. And and it was their mother that was holding everything down. And uh, that masculine that that masculine presence was not uh, was not there. Now I, I I don't know if you know for all people that you know um you know many black women if that may have been the case. Um I suspect because I think that my mother was like the only was the one of the only single women uh back in my hometown. Um but from what I could tell they the rest of them really did have uh nuclear families. However, one of the things that I had observed still, um, at least within my own family, was that the men weren't there. So the idea, that energy and that idea that they, you know, they didn't need a man was was a sort of a silent uh, kind of persistent drumming into my head. Now, one of the things that I, even though they they were operating in that energy, they were some of the most unhappy women <laughs> that I had ever, you know, that I had ever known. They, you know, they had operated so much uh, in that masculine energy that they attracted men that uh, were weaker than them and in terms of consciousness. But, you know, man, uh, that's just my two cents. <laughs> But can but can can it is it too late to redefine what they really were? I've met I had the privilege of meeting or being in a conference with William Gates, and in the introduction to him, he was a keynote speaker. In the introduction, the words "independently wealthy," "independent" was the word that was used. The very first thing he got up to say, I would like to make a correction. Because I am not independently wealthy. I am interdependent upon each and every one of you to buy a product that I am creating and you saw it to be valuable to your enhancement. Therefore, I'm dependent on you to buy it and see it as a value. The word interdependent is a word that we should be able to teach and create a reality for our girls and our boys to be self-reliant enough that someone can depend on us to do something. Because when I look at the word individual, I see I divide. Understood. And, you know, it's interesting you mentioned that because that was made is everything around us is based on relationship. We are relating some way or another with one another through some means or another, which pretty much ended, pretty much proves that independence really is not seen in the way that it ought to be seen. So I appreciate you bringing up that example. Well, I, you I, just want, I, I just want the family to be able to to convert this extremely powerful energy into. Someone told me that a laser can cut through metal, but then I realized all a laser is a very, very focused 40 watt light bulb. So if we focus okay. on all the energy, we can cut through all the, the the irony of our society that's destroying us from the 40 lot, from the from the lot of 40 watt light bulbs. Hmm. Okay. Well, I I I am definitely in agreement with him, and I and King over here is giving you the thumbs up too. <laughs> <laughs> you do know that we're not, you do know King. We're not on TV yet. I mean, just saying, it's not TV yet. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I hear you now. Yeah. That's, that's, next that's, that's, the next, that's the next season of, of of the Family Circle. I know it's coming, but. I just know that we have to start with the the visual of knowing that irregardless of how bad our history has been towards one another, look, brother, I know how bad our history is today with one another. When do we stop? 
when do we refocus and when do we say if we don't, we won't have to worry about our children because they won't be around to do anything for us in our in our sun, sundown years. We'll have to hire somebody if there's anybody or if there's any government programs that will help us get this living our final days together. So we got to start doing things differently today because if we don't, the future is extremely bleak. It might not happen yeah. with us, but what about our children? Our children started started to have their children, and because they're so they're so divided, and all it was was a connection for the sperm and the egg to get together, but no hearts to get together. Now what? We have just exactly what we're talking about. We have anarchy, no family, just anarchy. And now we are looking at the terminators, quite bleak. But we gotta gotta go back to when women the women equality conversation started. It should never started with just women. It should have been a conversation with men because those women that just got together got angry and started voting, but they still didn't talk to the man. They said, look, now I got my voting rights. You're going to listen to me. It's like that, but that's not a, that's not a relationship of conversation. That's a force. Matter of fact, the mob does that a lot. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we have to come back to the conversation table with open heart and a desire for for results, not a not a woman bashing, not a man bashing, but bashing the the, the division that has kept us at odds with one another. Our only, and this being 2017, this would be a great time to start a whole new consciousness that's going to change our children's children. Talk about a legacy. Absolutely. Yeah, it's interesting. I actually made a post yesterday. That said time is a very peculiar thing because time as we see it is past, present, and future. But when I see time, the past is gone. The future is not yet here. And the only time that is really of significant importance by theory is now. Right. Because it's now that determines what the future is going to look like. And so we have to operate in our now to construct it in the manner that is best suited for what the future ought to be. Because we are creators. Hmm. All right. All righty. So therefore, therefore the power of Psalms, the power of Psalm 82 and 6 is pretty relevant. We are God's. And the children of the most time. So most with definitely. us being God, every time we open our mouth, we speak life and or death. We have to exactly. really, really start being Absolutely. conscious of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love you. I love you for allowing me to share. And let's, I'm coming into the understanding that I have to change me. I have to, because of what I'm looking for, starts by me having a great reflection of what I'm looking for. So I'm excited yeah. about that in, in itself, and I appreciate this platform to allow me to openly accept my critics as well as my own criticism for my own shortcoming. I appreciate what you guys are doing in a major way. This is a true powerful beginning, and I'm I'm accepting it as a challenge that it is. Thank you. Thank, thank you. And we honor you. Namaste. Namaste. So something that was said that um, is that that was said just a moment ago, and I I want to bring it back to that uh, the, the reiteration, being mindful of your words, especially for those who may have been hurt um, uh, in the past, is that when because we have this this I guess you could say co-creative. Uh, experience where we what we speak the abracadabra I speak I you know I, I manifest what I speak and when you or when you say those words of about not needing um, and not needing uh, any not needing a man or not needing a woman because I, I know that there have been some men who who've said the same thing. Um, 
that <laughs> no, no, no woman, no cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what he was saying, but I was going through a relationship at the time to where I was in some serious pain, and I was like, "No woman, no cry." <laughs> but uh, once I understood the song, I was like, "Oh, oh, okay, I got it." He's telling the woman to be strong. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. And that's why she was. He was telling her, "No cry." Because the nation was there to help her. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I tell you, it was helping me out when I was going through the pain, boy. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, I, okay. So, I, ladies and gentlemen, you're getting a sneak peek of what I, you know, what our experience is like during our private time. <laughs> oh, Lord. I hope I didn't take it off the course, but I, I, I understand what you're saying when you say that um, I manifest what I speak. Yes. Because it was interesting. I made a note here that says, you know, words have power. Mm-hmm. And we have to recognize that we are creative energy in and of itself because we have been made in the image of God. Mm-hmm. And that imaging to see in our own mind what it is that we are bringing forth into manifestation. And people have to do that first with their words. Mm -hmm. Once you use your words, then you bring, what do you say, thoughts create things. Uh, Yeah, thoughts do create things. And so when you look at at the the, the feelings and the emotions that people have with certain things, you have energetic words then that are attached to emotions that are ties that emanate a force into the universe to honor your request. Yeah. So you say, I don't need a man. Energy that you put out there with that feeling of whatever it was that made you feel that way, the universe is hearing what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to honor your request because that's what it pretty much sounds like. You know, so I'm I'm glad that you're kind of attached to it, you know, are you crazy? <laughs> because, you know, the universe recognizes the need for balance. Absolutely. And it, it kind of blows me away when we look at what they call masculine energy and feminine energy. Because when I look at the, I guess it's what it's called, LBGT community. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What, what blows me away is, okay, you're talking about masculine energy and feminine energy. The masculine character or being is exuding feminine energy. Okay, wait a minute. Hold it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not understanding that. But but then I, I turn around and I look over here, and there's these women hanging out, and there's this couple where there is this woman with this other woman, but this woman on this side is exuding masculine energy. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, um, ooh, I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, what's going on with this masculine and feminine energy thing? Mm-hmm. And I think you brought that up earlier, which mm-hmm. I thought was interesting, because it makes you wonder, What type of energy are we emitting into the universe that brings forth this type of behavior that's going on around us? Absolutely. And I think that this is one of the reasons why it's necessary to, you know, if you you are finding yourself in that position where this this is your internal conversation, then it then that is something that needs to be addressed within yourself. That that there is something that is out of balance and out of order for it because you there that that thought process and that energy is actually con- contributing uh, to what it is that you're experiencing and that you're seeing uh, in ways in your in your own life, and but not only in your own life, but in the you know the lives 
uh, of others and the others in the and sort of that sort of unseen forces that are out there. Now, I really do re- recognize the fact that that this may be really esoteric, but just be mindful because we have we have that ability to create because we are made in the likeness of the creator that when you when you put that out there and that that you don't that you don't need the opposite sex you know that there there's something and especially when it is contrary to what it is that you are actually actually desiring i mean unless you're you know i mean if you really felt that way then you probably would be a monk and not be living out uh amounts i guess you could say the the rest of the world if that was really your idea and your concept that that you were not in that place but when but when you are in that energy of contradiction it 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 disrupts everything so I'm going to say it one more time. It's time to do the internal work of what it is that's needing to be healed within you. And also being rather clear on what it is that uh, that you are expecting, uh, expecting from your masculine counterparts. There has to be a reintroduction of, of respect for one another. And, and that, a larger part of that comes down to you know, honoring a person as they are, not necessarily wanting to control how they behave, because that's another thing that um, many people who who are in relationship with, uh, you know, the opposite sex and things go awry, well, you know, were you trying to control them? Were you expecting them to behave a certain way? Are you wanting them to do it your way? Um, it, it, it isn't necessary for it to be necessarily done, you know, your way, just so long as the outcome comes out to what the desired outcome. So your focus should be there. Anything you want to add to that? Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that um, because when you mentioned the thing about control, what I've discovered when we look at the um, LGBT community, mm-hmm. I've known persons who have been in um, lesbian relationships who thought that they were getting out of controlling relationships. Mm -hmm. But they ended up in the lesbian relationship to get away from the controlling relationship that they discovered when they were in a relationship with a man to find that they were in a controlling relationship with a woman woman who was just as forceful as the man was, if not more so, and or even in a, a level of uh, domestic abuse. And that was like, you know, if I'm going to get it from either direction, I better go back where I came from. <laughs> you know, this, this, this is getting crazy. But, you know, what I like is what you said, the inner energy of contradiction. Mm-hmm. That's a power. I'm going to have to do something with that with King's philosophy. The energy of contradiction, that is a deep phrase. Mm-hmm. I thank you for that. Uh, and I ask your permission if I may use that. Yes, you may. <laughs> if I, if I, if I, if I, I like that. That's some deep stuff right there. <laughs> okay. Um, well, uh, our caller that that talked with us earlier has something else that they want to add. Hold on. Hi. Welcome back. Hello? Are you there? This time I'm not afraid to identify myself. This is Amir. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, in seeing those type of relationships, you really begin to see something that in the heterosexual communities we were we, we hate to even hear. We hate to know that who we are with is an exact copy of who we are. Attracts is not true, especially in the um, alternative relationships. They are they are in those type of relationships, the same exact type of relationship they had before they vowed never to go with another woman or man. They got the same type of relationship. So now the question is, what is the co- 
common denominator. <laughs> common denominator is is you. Then now you can't say I'm in an abusive relationship because they are this or they are that. You can say I'm in an abusive relationship because I am this and I am that. That is that's where we start the the healing when we identify what the problem is. And the problem is opposites do not attract. Another thing we got to get rid of in our community. We're teaching the opposite attract. If you poor in mind, you're going to find you a rich woman or a rich man. Well, those things never happen because, like I thought, I've never seen anyone go to, um, what's that place called? Golden Corral and get a tenderloin that's an $80 cut. You just don't get it. You ain't going to have it. <laughs> you go to Morton and you go for that tenderloin and it's $80 and it's only six ounces. You're like, what the? But that's the difference between Golden Corral and Morton's. Both are, both came from the field. Both had to eat grass. But however, it's the presentation that makes the difference. And like my daughter says, I don't like going to restaurants where they don't serve me. I pay for it. They should serve me. Well, that mindset will get you someone who believes in the same exact thing versus, uh-uh, I pay $20, I'm going to get me $9 worth of food and and be, have to be wheeled out. Okay, those are the ones that will always gather the same mentality into their existence. I'm glad to, to know that there are those who desire a different mindset because they're ready to elevate themselves out of the dredgeries of that statement saying, the poor you should have with you always. But I like this the subtitle that says, I don't have to be one of them. So All right. when we realize that we are an attraction of what we have, then the abusiveness or the, or the calmness or the joy, all of those are reflected upon the mirror image that we reflect every day. What are you getting? Who are you? Mm. Now we mm. got some conversation. I say, yes, yes. Well, thank well, that, you so that, much. That was the, the 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 addition of of the uh, commonality of um, same sex relationship. It it start. It's not because of the relationship of the heterosexual ideal was too out of whack. They had to go get proof that they themselves are the problem. And now you you have, I was with women, I was with men, and I have the same outcome. Okay, let me go back to the drawing board. And like you said, uh, Reverend, Reverend Kaya, go within to find the, the healing that's needed. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Now I got two witnesses to say that I got the problem. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> well, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, you're you're quite welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for calling calling in. Yeah, I did have brought that up earlier. Um, that you know, people have to identify and recognize what they are drawing to themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, when you say and I'm saying if this is a female, I don't need a man. What are you drawing to yourself? Mm-hmm. What type of energy are you drawing to your environment? Mm-hmm. What is it that's going on inside of your psyche that is emanating into the universe that you're calling for? Uh, the absence of <laughs> Absolutely, the absence of what it is that you're that you're desiring, because uh, because the the universe, uh, you know, the universe of its response to you um, tends to you know like whatever the dominant energy is, what it is that you draw, generally. And if you, you know, man, or many of the well, many of the people who actually say that they don't need, you know, somebody in their experience, they, there's there's nothing but crickets. 
and and something's causing me to reflect back on something that you had shared earlier, and I guess this may be considered a regression, but you had brought up the thing about being in a family of women. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, interestingly enough, I am one of many, well, they're one in the same place. Not really. <laughs> 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 um, I was one of few people who had a father that lived in a home, but he constantly was at work, and when he came home, like after, I would say maybe 5 o'clock, depending on the job he had, because he was a mechanic, auto mechanic, um, which I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of. He was a self okay. He was a self-employed black man, only had a third-grade education, went into the military at the age of 15, and developed skills because of the desire he had inside of himself to be an entrepreneur. Now, he made sure that his family was taken care of. And he was the provider for the family. But my experience was being around my mother and my two sisters. And my mother was very conscious of that. So she got me involved in Boy Scouts and, you know, whatever things that she could to get me out of the house. And um, the female energy that was in my life was very strong because she has like 10 siblings, two are male, and the others are female. So my aunts would come visit quite regularly. So there was females all over the place. Mm -hmm. But the thing was, was that they were strong individuals. And they did not confuse their strength with masculinity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they understood that whatever situation was going on in their life, they had to bring balance to the situation. But that didn't change who they were as an individual. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm grateful that, you know, my aunts and the relationships that they were in, they were sustainable relationships I remember only one time the way there was a relationship that kind of kicked in that I felt because I was like in my teens then and I was like, you know, I'm going to protect my my aunt because I don't know who this man is that she coming here talking about, but you know, she not hurt my he not hurt my aunt. I'm going, I'm ready to fight something. I'm ready to fight something. <laughs> <laughs> but but I I didn't have to step into that situation. It was just that she came down to my mom to get that to get that solace if you will, Mm -hmm. in that situation so that she could grow from it Mm -hmm. and become a stronger person. So strength being equated with being a man. Mm -hmm. So we have to be cautious when we look at what a person is saying when they say, I don't need a man. Because it could very well be that it's tied up in some kind of emotional feeling that they've had from disappointment pain, hurt, or it just could be that they want to express that they have strength also and to, I guess, submit to some man having strength that greater than what they have makes them feel as if they're taking something away from themselves. But then I I would say in that particular instance, that you really should not think of it as submission. Uh, And if you find yourself disappearing, and that's another thing, if you find yourself in a position where you're disappearing in the relationship, then then that has to be looked at also because what you are looking to experience is, is being whole, perfect, and complete in the relationship with somebody who mirrors um, mirrors back to you, you know, 
you know, who you are, the best of, you know, the best of who you are, yeah, even sometimes the worst of who you are, but and but do it in a way that has a sort of a synchronicity and a balance to it. Yeah, it, I think you, you're right, because relationships should be about healing. They are about healing. Well, and people just don't people don't recognize it. Right, right, and that's 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 crazy. You know, that's why I guess to say, are you crazy? <laughs> because you know, we have to understand that a soft answer turns away anger. Encouraging words requires empathy, and seeing the world from the other person's perspective. You know, everything doesn't revolve around you. You know, Mm -hmm. consider other people and have the consciousness that in giving respect, I get respect in return. That's reciprocity. That's a natural law. Mm -hmm. Live in it, and you'd be surprised how life is going to treat you. Because if you're not living in it, you're going to feel like people are doing you wrong anyway. And they're not doing you wrong. You're doing yourself wrong. And if that's the case, you need healing. Come to the family healing circle. <laughs> and with that, we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> That was a cool song. Love me in a special way. You know, divine intelligence is awesome. But I had no idea he was going to put that song on. And as I look at our, I find it important for life in and of itself is love. And love provides for us. No matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstance. But the thing is, is that we have to live and act in love. I did a post last night on um, King's Philosophy, uh, which happens to be a YouTube channel, which you can actually type in King's Philosophy, and you will be able to find that on YouTube. And uh, we're also <laughs> going to have that as a radio, show program. radio program. Here on the Family Healing Circle, right. and it's right. on the 26th. Okay. Right. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> um, and um, last night when I did my post, it was King's philosophy is love. And I thought about that because, you know, we're bringing the show up and there's some things we're putting together. But when you look at our topic today, when you live in love, and you act in love, and everything that you do is about love. Loving yourself first is paramount. Mm-hmm. Loving God is first and paramount. Now, some people may say that's a contradiction because how can you love God first and love yourself first? You and God are one. Because you and God are one. have missed that in a lot of ways because of the way which doctrines have kind of brought the program to people mm-hmm. and deliberately have people programmed to believe things that do not match with the will of divine intelligence. Mm-hmm. So we have people running around the place saying, I don't need a man. Mm-hmm. When are men running around saying, I don't need a woman? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've heard some pretty ugly That's things thing. from mm-hmm. some guys mm-hmm. because of the pain and the suffering that they may have gone through. Mm-hmm. But what I've discovered as I continue with conversation in their issues and about their issues is pain and the suffering that they had gone through, they had to readjust their mind to handle what had happened. And the best way for them to handle it was to extricate the feminine out of their existence. 
at least for that moment of their pain. And then, unfortunately, there was this element of where there was the degradation and marginalization that should not have occurred. But always, and never consistent. So when you stop loving, you stop loving yourself. When you act outside of love, you bring a disconnect to the flow of love. So you're not going to get it, not the way in which you want to receive it, because you're not putting it out in a manner that requires love to recognize you and come back to you. So it's important to understand that words have power, and when those words are attached to an emotion, an emotional energy being emitted into the universe is going to bring to you what it is you first going to honor that. That's one of the reasons why they say in the law of attraction, mm-hmm. what you put out there, you're going to get back. So if you're constantly kicking out uh, complaints, negativity, negative energy, well, that's what the universe hears that you are focused on. So, okay, here, have some more. First, know what you want. Be clear. And be clear. That's Mm -hmm. right. Be clear. So that it can honor what you're focused on. And you can feel on it because... That's it. (laughs) <laughs> okay, and and he see he gets you know well, he got deep on me. You know, that, that. <laughs> thank you, thank you, honey, because that means I'm deep too. <laughs> I don't know why it keeps going there. I, I, just, I don't understand it. <laughs> Okay, so there are a few people in the line, so if you are interested in joining the conversation, please pose one of the the things that, um, you know, a thought that has occurred to me. When, when people enter that space um, of, of not, you know, of going there because of because of their pain, uh, you you are in fact, you know, more or less sort of crippling yourself for bringing into your experience what it is that you're truly desiring. And also, um, another thought that has occurred to me is that, you know, there are, <laughs> you know, a, you know that. Uh, you know, there is always a, an agenda someplace else. You are more or less sort of exposing yourself to a different agenda um, that is out there that is promoting that you become you become connected with something else. I know that <clears throat> there are, at, for instance, and and you don't have to take my word for it because you can research it yourself. But there are actually uh, there are actually people you know if you don't want to deal with uh, the actual you know relationships you could actually buy a machine. Um, I think there's like some uh, out in Japan they have developed some <laughs> this, this is crazy there's some type of sex doll. Oh Lord, I don't know where we're going now. That's okay. <laughs> It, it, you know, but here that is, you know, that let's put it let's put it this way. I'm 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 telling you, I'm putting it out there and letting people know that that when you when you say that you don't need a man or a woman, you know, that there, there is this sort of distorted <laughs> energy out there that says, well, we know you you have some creature comforts, so we're going to create a machine for you. To to uh, to talk about sports all the time and that you can have sex with, you know, like they I think they're they're called biobots or something like that. They probably are. 
<laughs> and okay, so uh, let's just put it this way: I, I am, I am totally not, you know, totally not down for something like that. When I think Harvey actually shared that information with me before he left. Um, no wonder he left. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You are so wrong. You're so wrong. <laughs> oh dear. So when when he shared that information with me, uh, you know, all I could think of there was a part of me that inwardly cringed when he shared that information with me because uh, you know relationships are so important. Relationships, you know. <laughs> in and of themselves, help us in our evolution. And, the, and and I'm not just talking, you know, intimate relationships. I'm just talking about relationships in general. They they help us in our evolution to grow and to change and to to develop more and to get closer to source. So, you know, what are, you know, you get into that energy of not wanting uh, you know, not wanting to be involved in relationship that, you know, <laughs> I would say, you know, that I pray for your evolution and your change of, 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 uh, of wanting to, to start relating with people because, you know, we, we all, we, you can't do it by yourself. Just, you know, you can't. Well, it's interesting. Um, you know, the technological age, actually interjected into mm-hmm. society a mindset of being detached. Mm-hmm. You know, we look at the mm-hmm. cell phones, we see how people walk down the street nowadays. Mm-hmm. You know, the simplest example I can think of is, you know, there was a time back in the 60s where if you saw somebody walking down the street talking and there was nobody beside them, they were crazy. Nowadays, mm-hmm. somebody walks down the street and talking, there's a good chance they're on a the cell phone. And they're crazy. <laughs> but, but, but the thing is, is that they don't recognize now that they're crazy. Just like that person that was back in the mm-hmm. 60s walking down the street didn't recognize they were crazy. Because in today's society, what's happening is you're detaching yourself from society. Mm-hmm. You're walking down the street and you're at this particular era of time of which you're going down the street. And I've seen people do this, well, cell phone while traffic is moving, and they almost get hit. They'll walk down the street, and they're not paying attention to the people that are around them. And you've seen it on um, social media where they've snatched somebody's cell phone from them because they wasn't paying attention to them, you know? So when you bring up this thing about these um, artificial intelligence being used as a sex toy, mm-hmm. um. It's another aspect of technology detaching us from ourselves. Absolutely. And, you know, when I grew up, you know, it was like if you had certain needs, there was hands-on experience. You know, there may not have been nobody else there, but you had your hands (laughs) and you had your experience. (laughs) Now, you after that experience, then you go back out into the world. But it's developing now to where... If you have the money, you can be isolated from anything and everybody, and we don't know what that's creating. No, well, I I will say, well, I will talk about what I'm observing. Um, okay, so recently I I listened to a video on uh, this gentleman that was talking about millennials, and I just wanted to say. Harvey, we love you, man. Just want to let you know. <laughs> Go ahead and share your thing about the millennials. So, you know, we're we're having a culture, you know, um, the the millennials are now entering the workforce, and there he the the gentleman was talking about the number of issues that that the millennials are facing, but one issue that he you know, that he talked about that can be brought here is the issue of relationship. And that, you know, one of the things that he shared was that 
because, you know, and, and this sort of ties in, but what, what's beginning to happen is that millennials are, are, you know, having what you would call superficial relationships because they're communicating, you know, through these, uh, through technology and they're not, not fully engaged with a person when they're sitting across from them dinner table. And, and uh, the, what the gentleman said was that, that what this culture has actually created, especially amongst the millennials, is that they've created this bit of an addiction, and this addiction to technology. And as a result of it, they, the millennials are not able to engage and have what you would call deep, meaningful relationships with one another. So, and, and again, uh, I, as I said before, there is a need for that. So, you know, some of you may be asking, well, what's the what's the solution? Now, for for those of you who would say that you don't need um, the opposite, you know, you, you don't need people. You don't need man. You don't need little woman. You you just don't need people. I would I would say that you need to go ahead and revisit that and actually address what it is, what it is that where that pain comes from, and. You know, whether or not it's through coaching, whether or not it's through counseling, it has to be addressed because the thing is is that you cannot get along in this world without other people. You cannot get along in this world without relationships. And for, you know, young people who may be listening to this right now, what you really need to do is actually take the time out to develop relationships. That can mean actually, you know, if you're having lunch with a friend, leaving the cell phone in the car and that, that whole concept, you're not really engaged uh, in any type of relationship if, you're sit, if, you know, everybody at the table is engaged with their cell phone. And, and even I at times have had to, you know, pull back on the technology because it is a distraction. It is an addiction that has actually been created in our society. Um, so one of, and, and another thing that he talked about was also that, and that not understanding that relationships need to be developed, that the millennials are having this expectation of, you know, coming into an organization and being able to make a difference and make a change um, in eight months as opposed to putting in the time and, and, and you know, the time and the energy in, in order to build up to what it is that they want to create. But um, we're going to do is we are going to take a quick break, and we will be back. And if there is anybody who is interested in um, engaging with us, you know, to, to, add, your, uh, to add your thoughts in, um, please feel free, press one, and and we will bring you on the line. And we're back, and uh, I see that we have another caller that wants to speak with us. Hold on, please. Welcome to One Love, One Connection with us. Um, tell us your name and, you know, where, and you can go ahead and ask your question. Or have a comment. Hello, is this me? Yes, it is you. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Uh, didn't realize that <laughs> I was the one. So, um, thank you. This is Zakia calling from Baltimore. Uh, first hey, of all, I just want to tell you too. You are cracking me up. I just love it. I love your energy. Uh, you're laughing together. It's just so beautiful. Thank you so much um, yeah, for sharing you. your yourselves with us uh, tonight. Wow, interesting conversation. So I absolutely agree that whatever we speak out will come back to us. And if Mm -hmm. uh, brothers and sisters are saying, I don't need a man or I don't need a woman, um, you know, that's exactly what will show up. And, of course, it all is 
absolutely related to ourselves. There's some there's some fear wrapped up in there, and I and I understand that perfectly because I've been in situations and in, in places in my life when I've had a not so good relationship, and I would say, I don't ever, I don't care, don't you ever, I don't care, I don't want to even see another man. <laughs> Uh, but truly, <laughs> but you know, you say things like that, or I, I'll bring it back to myself. I have said things like that because I'm angry, and you know, I'm in, mm-hmm. in some sort of bitterness, and you know, un, unhappiness about how this past relationship ended. But you know, what I love, absolutely love about God and the universe. Universal intelligence truly knows exactly what it is that you're saying and knows your heart because I've also been at that point where um, a relationship has ended and I'm saying like I am done with this thing I don't even want to ever and then and won't even be thinking about you know having a relationship I'm not pursuing it I'm not looking online I'm not even thinking about I'm going to go somewhere and meet someone and that's the very time someone will show up in my life. That's the very time, um, you know, the universe sends this person to show up. And then I find myself back in the in relationship again and back in love again. And I just think it's, you know, because truly we know that uh, relationships are a part of our existence. I mean, it really is. And when we haven't completed what we came here to learn with with each other and teach each other and grow together, um, then the universe is going to continue to process, even when we may be resistant to it. So I've had I've been on both ends of the spectrum, and um, uh, I think we ought to yes be very very careful um, and aware of what we speak, and um, and know that we definitely are here. To learn and grow. None, none of us would be on this planet if it were not for the opposite sex. Come on, let's get real with it. <laughs> if, you, if, mama, if mama didn't have a man, wouldn't be no Zakia, wouldn't be no Arlene, or it wouldn't be no King. You understand? And if daddy yeah, didn't absolutely. have a woman, same thing. So, um, you know, we can grow past the old hurts and the old things and realize that, you know, it is us who are attracting the people in our lives. You know, let's put the responsibility Mm -hmm. on what it is. We are bringing the people into our experience that we're having these relationships with, and if they're not turning out, you know, totally loving and caring and peaceful and delicious like you guys uh, are experiencing together, um, then let's look inside of ourselves, find out where we need to do our work, heal that place, and you know, know that we will then uh, bring into our experience that what we desire. So having said all that, I would like to ask, what do you say to the people, or women, I'll just, women, because I've only heard this from women, <laughs> I don't need no man. All I need is Jesus. I don't need no man. I got Jesus. What would you say? Hallelujah. get them out of, you know, it's like, it's strange, but I'll I'll give this analogy. A person who has gone through certain experiences and they find a place of comfort, they will stay in that place of comfort no matter what you do because that's believe anything other than knowing that they found their place of comfort. And a person like that, if you try to draw them out of their place of comfort, they might fight you. (laughs) They might fight you. (laughs) And they might just cancel you out their life. So 
those persons I try to communicate with, if by chance there's something that I can share with them, that spirit allows me to share with them, that brings to them what's necessary for them to shift because everything has to be done out of love. Mm -hmm. And love is going to provide what is needed for those individuals and every individual if we recognize that it is love that you have to start with and love that you have to end with, make that which makes love everything. Okay, so my my response to that is it's similar to King's, and I I let's put it this way: when they mention Jesus, I you know. I, in, unless I'm, you know, inspired to to say anything, whether you know, I'm, I'm gonna, chances are I'm gonna leave them where they are because, as far as I'm concerned, um, it's pretty much the same. It's the same to it, it's the same thing that we've talked about before, which is, you know, they're in that that energy of I don't need, and the universe, you know. If the intelligence is going to put them in that place of I don't need, and one of the things that you can say is that uh, say to that individual is like, well, here's one of the things that I do know about Jesus and in the answering of prayers is that when you're ready, you need to call on Jesus to bring that right individual into your experience. Because, you know, where you are right now, yeah, you're needing Jesus and he's helping you to heal, then, hey, that that's fine. That's fine. That's good. And, you know, if that works for you, that that that's good. Um, but make sure that you, well, when you are ready for that experience with, uh, with uh, that next uh, person that you bring in the divine, uh, when you're when you're calling in that love mate, you know, and and also pray for whatever you know, and and while you're in that stage of that place of saying I don't need a man, also say you know I I pray for I pray for the healing that that I'm needing too, you know, pray you know, call in to to bring in that healing as well. And if I may add now, if they say that all they need is Jesus, and they out getting nooky, then they are a lion cookie, and they need Jesus for real, but they need him for another reason, because something went wrong. Well, all right, and and I would certainly agree uh, agree with that because that means that you definitely need more than just Jesus. Um, but you know, what, one of the things that I have found in 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 watching the people who have said that to me is that they end up lonely, and they don't even realize I think that they are in that level of loneliness, and it just kind of you know. You know, I just watch them, and it, it saddens my heart because I know that if they would just open themselves up to a new experience, and and I've even said this to to them, um, just because that person showed up the way that they did doesn't mean that the next one is going to show up that way. I would love for you to open yourself up to the possibilities that Jesus can bring you the man of your desires, that, that man that will treat you like the queen that you are, will will love on you and adore and cherish you. So if you go and call on Jesus, then call on him to bring to you the desires that truly are of your heart, that truly are of your heart. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know, yeah. Yeah. That is so, so true because when loneliness leads to separation, mm-hmm, Jesus yeah. ain't involved in that. And so they're playing with themselves, and they're, mm-hmm. they're dealing with the hurt that they're not allowing to be healed. And so they're in their festering, and that's not good for them. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I and I would also say that sometimes uh our um religious organizations encourage that. And I, you know, I'm grateful that I'm not a part of uh, a community that's like that, but some of our spiritual communities uh, are encouraging that. And, you know, I won't go there because, you know, that's a whole other conversation. But, um, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but thank you for allowing me to share. I love you both so much. It's a beautiful conversation tonight. And I just want to also add one more thing real quick. You are so right about people in these cell phones. I will just remember one time I went to a funeral And everybody came back to the house, and honest to goodness, there was no relating with one another. People came Mm -hmm. in. They sat in the living room. Everybody had a cell phone out. And I just sat and looked around, and I was in awe. Now, see, it was a little bit different because I was in a uh, Caucasian um, community. And we get a little bit different in our community. When, when when black folks get together, we come together, we're going to party, we're going to celebrate. Yeah. But, but, but this particular community, honest to goodness, everybody sat there with a the cell phone, and I don't even think there was one person that said anything to it, to the other person at all. And I was very um, – it, it really made me sad. I'm like, oh, my God, we've gotten to that, but we don't even talk to each other anymore? Yeah, so I um, – and I heard about that doll, uh, Ali, girlfriend. I heard about that doll. I saw it on the on the talk. I think it was, and I was like, O M G, really, <laughs> really? Oh my gosh! I mean, you know, I never and there you have it, about ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Somebody co-signing, and I, you know, yeah, I'm telling you, yes. But go ahead. It's go a ahead. real. It's a real thing. And I said, I said, you know, I know we have our toys, and girls, girls, we love our toys, but we ain't trying to replace our men with no big old huge uh, uh, lifelike man or, or woman. So anyway, but it's out there for real. So, all right, I'm <laughs> I'm finished. Peace and love. Peace. Lord Jesus, help us. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Love you, Zakia. <laughs> Love you too, peace. <laughs> okay, and um, we're going to we we only have a few minutes, but just in case, because I'm not sure, um, um, we're going to bring Amir back on the line. Um, Amir, do you have anything else to share before we sign off? And I guess that would be a no. It's no crickets. <laughs> Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We are going to sign out. Uh, this oh, is- I just want to make mention, um, Zakia happens to have a book out um, on relation. I think it's on relationships. Does she want to bring that up to us? Because I'm sure that's healing for some others as well. I was listening to a program earlier today that she was making. Uh, she was being interviewed regarding that. Zakia, are you there? Thank you so much, Brother King. I appreciate the opportunity to share my book, Jamaica, a memoir of miracles, manifestations, love. Absolutely. Um, It's a memoir. It's about my journey and also about the most amazing experience that I've had thus far, and that was my experience in Jamaica where I learned unconditional love. Um, and it's a powerful, powerful lesson and a blessing in a, um, with relationships. So I invite you all to get your copy. You can go to Amazon.com, put in the search bar, Jamaica, a memoir of miracles, manifestations, love. So for $14.95, you can also go to my author page at author Zakia Amida. Author Zakia Amida, and uh, you'll see the link there as well. I appreciate you so much. Get your copy, and after you read my book, write a review on Amazon so we can get this book to number one New York Times bestseller. It's a story about me, about my journey, and it all really centers around 
my self-love and the lack of it as I was growing up and the evolution to self-love and forgiveness and unconditional love. So in Jamaica. All right. Peace and love. Thank you so much, King, for allowing me the opportunity to share. One love. Thank you so very much, and thank you for your service. Right. Namaste. 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 Okay. Now, okay. I, want, I want to also mention that I do have a YouTube channel called King's Philosophy. I'm typing in um, the search engine on YouTube, King's Philosophy, and you'll see some dude sitting in a, on like a throne with a staff in his hand. And um, I have poured into that channel, and I'm pouring into that channel, some of the wisdom that um, Infinite uh, Intelligence has given me to share. And I would love it to get comments regarding what you hear, what inspires you, what brings questions. Feel free to put them in the comment section. And before the month is out, I'm sure I'll get back to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and also, um, January the 26th is going to be my first blog talk radio show, which is King's Philosophy is Love. All right. All right. So we are going to sign out now. And thank you so much for joining us this evening. Namaste. Namaste. One love.